editing Kim here. Uh, big warning again. I forgot but the fan is on, the ceiling fan's on, and it's click, 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 click. And you're gonna hear it, cause in, in this editing, I can hear it. So, sorry. The clicking noise is back. Hello, my fellow flawless, limitless, sexy, sassy, saucy, HBICs. How are you on this lovely morning, afternoon, or evening? How are you all? I hope you are all choosing to be fabulous. I hope you are all choosing to be the versions of yourself that have exactly what you want. I hope that's what you're doing. I hope you're not shitting yourself over 3D reality. I hope you're not, but if you are, here's another video for you, okay? Before I jump in, let me just say, if you need help figuring out what's going on between you and your manifestation, please feel free to email me at manifestingwithkimberly at gmail.com. All of my coaching options are in the drop box below. They're in the screens that just went by. I have three channel memberships where I go live with my channel members every single week for each group, for each membership. The third one, I am patiently awaiting YouTube's approval. Uh, I'm awaiting on it. I'm intending that it's happening immediately. That third group will be the holier than thou group. That is the group that we are going to deep dive into manifestation. It is called the Advanced Manifestors because we are gonna cover all topics of manifestation. We're gonna be going down to the books. You do not personally have to have the books in order to be in the group. I will be providing that information, just so you know. So you don't have to go out and buy anything. Just come to the membership. That membership comes with the ability to come to any of the channel memberships. So all three, so it's three for the price of one. The other two memberships, I go live with them every single Tuesday at 9.30 p.m.-ish, Eastern Standard Time. That is a zhuzh only group. We only talk success stories, tips, and tricks. I have the Friday group, which I go live with them every single Friday at 9 a.m.-ish, Eastern Standard Time. And that is the group to get yourself in the hot seat. It's like getting yourself a 10 to 15 minute quick hot seat little coaching session with me if you get yourself in that hot seat. So going back to the third one, it's not live on the channel yet. I'm waiting on YouTube. That group is going to come with another special perk. It's also going to be coming with the recordings of all the memberships, including the exclusive lives group. Yes, that third membership, if you join it, will have its own playlist the recordings of the Tuesday group is going to start this week. But that third membership, that's your perk. You're the only one gonna be able to view the recording. So it's a special thank you for joining that third tier group. That's a lot. So, you, so the hot seat group, that playlist already exists. You know, if you join the hot seat or above, you get access to the recordings anyway, but that's the special perk of that third membership. You will have the live replays to watch of the exclusive live membership, the hot seat coaching membership, and the advanced manifestors membership. So you're gonna have access to all of them. I am also planning on giving that third tier uh, random private live streams right on YouTube. I've got all sorts of things planned for that third group. So the third group, it's going to be a doozy. It's going to be a fun one. Outside of that, I have TikTok, I have Instagram, I have Clapper, and I would love for you to join me everywhere. If you're new here, how you doing? Yes, I am like this all the time. I would love for you to subscribe and come back and see me. If you are new, please let me know down below that you have subscribed because, again, YouTube doesn't always tell me specific names. It just shows me a number. That my number went up. Just saying. Okay? Um, yeah, that's enough for my intro. And I almost kept it under the four minute mark. Almost. Even with all that detailed info. Just saying. Okay. So let's jump in. So over the last few days, I have put up um, a couple of videos where I keep bringing the topic of manifestation back to prayer, right? The original method or technique of manifestation. Ask, believe, receive. Bitch. I'm copywriting that. Ask, believe, receive receive, bitch, okay? You ask for what your desire is, that's essentially you saying, yeah, I want that. You believe 
Now, we've already had that conversation. Belief isn't nece necessary to truly manifest. It just isn't. However, y'all know my opinion if you've watched the other videos. We should not be, you know, relentlessly fighting for that. I don't have to believe. Well, good. So when you're wavering and losing your shit, you don't have that belief platform to land on. Well done. That's my opinion on that, okay? And receive. You receive it. You get your manifestation. And you are the person, really, from every aspect of ask, believe, receive, bitch. You're all three. Meaning you're the one giving it to yourself. You are. Because of who you are is pure, unadulterated consciousness. You're all parts. Okay? Where we get tripped up, I've said this a million times, is because we're trying to interpret reality logically and literally. And for some of us, we're trying to control. We're trying to control every single thing that happens. And you want to get control over reality? You want to get control and enjoy your life? It's letting go of the control. It is. We can debate that too. But I'm going to reread a little something something by reread this first portion I read it in a video I just put up the other day. I think some of y'all need to rehear it. And I'm going to add to it. Prayer, which is essentially manifestation, guys. Prayer is a surrender. It means abandoning oneself to the feeling of the wish fulfilled. If prayer brings no response, there is something wrong with the prayer. And the fault lies generally in too much effort. Serious confusion arises insofar as men identify the state of prayer with an act of will. Instead of contrasting it with an act of will. The sovereign rule is to make no effort. And if this is observed, you will intuitively fall into the right attitude. I'm not done. Creativeness is not an act of will, but a deeper receptiveness, a keener susceptibility. The acceptance of the end, the acceptance of the answered prayer finds the means for its realization. Feel yourself into the state of the answered prayer until the state fills the mind and crowds all other states out of your consciousness. What we must work for is not the development of the will, but the education of the imagination and the steadying of attention. Prayer succeeds by avoiding conflict. Prayer is, above all things, easy. Its greatest enemy is effort. The mighty surrenders itself fully only to that which is most gentle. The wealth of heaven may not be seized by a strong will, but surrenders itself a free gift to the God spent moment. Along the lines of least resistance, travel spiritual as well as physical forces. We must act on the assumption that we already possess that which we desire. For all that we desire is already present within us. It only waits to be claimed. That it must be claimed is a necessary condition by which we realize our desires. Our prayers are answered if we assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and continue in that assumption. Let me kim all that back down for you. We do not have to be efforting in our 3D. We don't have to be hard on ourselves. We don't have to be beating ourselves up when things pop up in reality that we don't exactly love, but we know it's a manifestation of our old self. We don't beat ourselves up for that shit. I had to stop and put my hair up. I'm sorry. It is warm and my hair is still damp from my shower. So it's, it's hot, you know what I'm saying? Okay. We don't have to try and force things to happen in 3D. You don't have to be hard on yourself over what thoughts we're thinking. 
what we do and should do is spend our time, as Neville said, steadying our attention and educating our imagination. Now, our imagination is Christ. It's, it's God. If you don't believe in those, it's your universe connection. It's where you're manifesting. It's where you're deciding who you are. Your imagination is your true reality. So when Neville mentions educating your imagination, in my opinion, he is referring to choosing what you want and allowing yourself to get carried away with thinking about experiencing it. Thinking as your new self. Allowing yourself to marinate in, this is what I'm manifesting, so this is what my life would look like. This is how I think I would feel as my new self. Oh shit, I am new self. As Neville said, you know, heaven, all of heaven, the gifts of heaven are already present within us in our imagination. Again, we sincerely need to remember our imagination is not friggin' fantasy. It's not fantasy. We've all been conditioned to believe that when we are utilizing our imagination, as children, I'm sure you all heard at least one time, you know, stop fantasizing. Come back to reality. Stop fooling around. Get out of your own way. Get out of imagination. Get back to work. I don't know. I'm sure you've heard something along those lines. When he's referring to the mighty surrenders itself fully only to that which is most gentle. Surrender your 3D. Surrender it. The sooner you get to the conscious decision to be your new self and the conscious freedom of not fretting, stressing over every single thing you experience in 3D, the sooner you grab full control of your own reality, of the 3D. To have the most control is to let go of 3D. Are you hearing me? This isn't about fighting with yourself. This isn't about trying to control circumstances. Now, listen, in the past, I have talked about something similar. And I was asked the question, well, Kim, why can't we just control or decide every single circumstance we experience of our unfolding? Why can't we do that? If we're God, if we're pure, unadulterated consciousness, why can't we? You know, and there's that part of me that thinks, you know, from a logical perspective, yeah, that makes sense to me. Why shouldn't we be able to? We're God. But here's the thing. As God, as pure unadulterated consciousness, you would know better because that's who you really are. But let's just be honest. You would know better to not freak out every time Someone farted in the wind in reality. As God, you wouldn't be labeling everything or, sorry, back up, Kim. As pure awareness, pure consciousness, pure unadulterated consciousness. I'm saying as God, you wouldn't label things good or bad. You would know everything is neutral. Everything is truly meaningless. But because we get caught in that hamster wheel, that cycle of judging 3D by labeling circumstances. Isn't that quite hypocrisy to what you're trying to accomplish in manifestation? I'm not telling you that you need to get to the place of accepting that you're going to experience terrible things. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the sooner you see that there's nothing truly to be afraid of out here because you are always quantum jumping between 
realities. You are not stuck to one reality. You, you really are at your own beautiful freedom of free will. You are always choosing for yourself where you are, what you're experiencing. But so many of us succumb to the circumstances and see things as roadblocks, obstacles, things getting in the way of your manifestation. You're, you are being an unfavorable version of yourself and you're choosing it. I don't think there is anything wrong with wanting to experience specific experiences or specific circumstances in your 3D. And I see nothing wrong with claiming them for yourself. But that's the thing. Claim it. Claim it for yourself. But stop responding like a muggle, like a human, and see reality for what it is. I am, again, I'm not telling you that you have to like everything you experience. You are here as a human being, here to have the human, physical, 3D experience, which experience in the 3D means any type of experiences. But I'm saying you are becoming more aware of who you really are. So yes, you're still going to have experiences in the 3D. But nothing in 3D is set in stone. Nothing really ever in 3D has to be feared. Because no matter where you are on your journey, what you're experiencing in reality is leading you to your outcome if you are making that decision for yourself. I'll fight this one to the death that you can't mess up your own manifestation. You can't. Because you're not limited to this one 3D reality, this one version of yourself. You have total freedom within consciousness to be anybody you want to be. To be any version of you you want to be. But when you're tied up, trying to hang tight to prevent certain things from happening. When you're getting too wound up too attached, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're making this more difficult than it needs to be. Surrender to 3D. Surrender is very much detachment. It's saying, I don't give a shit what's happening in 3D reality. I am my new self. Reality doesn't tell me who I am. I tell it. So I'm not going to fight against the grain over every single circumstance, whether I like them or not. I'm not going to fight them. I'm going to choose my new self. So I happily get to trust and believe that I'm going to have my outcome because I keep choosing that for myself. I keep aligning with the reality I want to be in. So therefore, I will have what I want. And so should all of you. Sometimes we spend too much time judging the 3D. And what are we doing in those moments? We're becoming entranced with the 3D all over again. I can't say this enough. Your pure, unadulterated consciousness. Do you realize what that means? Do you realize the freedom in knowing that? You're shaping, choosing, bending reality to your will. You are. But if you want to experience certain things, let's say, let's use an example. Let's say you're manifesting a specific person and you're manifesting marriage, but you want to have this ideal, you know, being engaged to you, you have this ideal, you know, thing in your imagination. Well, I want to be engaged at the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. I want that. I want to experience that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think we know the outcome is to be married. But I see nothing wrong with saying, hey, I want to experience that too, though. I want to have that experience. I want to be proposed to at the Eiffel Tower in Paris. I want that. 
Okay, so be that. Be that version of yourself. Be the version of self who is in a loving, fulfilling, committed marriage. And I happen to be proposed at the Eiffel Tower. That's who I am. That was my experience. That's how I would talk as if I already experienced it. That's just my way of talking. You don't have to use the same tense I use. That just seems easier to me. So identify as that. But don't shit yourself in reality if you've got no plans to travel to Paris and you caught your SP shopping for rings. Don't logically put those together and then claim for yourself, I'm not getting my Paris engagement proposal. I'm not getting it because this and this is happening in 3D. So therefore, when you're applying logic from the place of, Kim, it's pretty basic. One plus one equals two. Number one, SP's been shopping for rings. Number two, we don't have any plans to Paris. So one plus one equals two, Kim. Okay. Logical, literal, muggle you. Okay. So you're going to claim that for yourself? You're going to claim that? Because that's what makes logical, literal sense to you. I'm not going to get my Paris proposal because these two factors are in my 3D. Hi, this is why I say logic is not our friend. Why are you applying logic to your manifestation? Let's apply the spiritual realm. Let's apply the fourth dimension and above. Let's apply conscious awareness. Instead, I don't care that I don't see any tickets to Paris. I don't care that SP's looking at rings. I'm in the reality where I get my Paris proposal. So you see the outcomes to be married, but the desire is to also have that experience of having a particular proposal but do you see, you could have been just identifying as new self, the self that experienced the above, instead of allowing your awareness, your focus, your time, attention on the 3D circumstances that you are trying to fight against because you've given it the meaning. There's no tickets to France. There's no tickets to Paris at the Eiffel Tower and SP's already shopping for rings. So I'm gonna take those circumstances and claim that I'm in the reality that I don't get my Paris proposal. You're so powerful at being able to be any version of yourself that you get to make that decision. Okay, if you wanna use logic, one plus one equals two, no Paris tickets. I'm going to keep saying it. No Paris tickets. Boyfriend shopping for rings or SP shopping for rings. That must equate because that's what I see in my reality. So that must mean I'm not going to get what I want. Yeah, if you were a limited muggle bitch. Yeah, if you were only stuck mentally, consciously, physically, in 3D, but you're none of those things. You are awake now, you know better. You know now that all you have to do is make a new decision. Make a new decision. Who are you? We don't let 3D circumstances tell us who we are. So you see by what I'm saying is, there's nothing wrong with wanting to have certain experiences on your bridge of incidents. But there's definitely a way to approach it. We can approach it as I'm going to shit myself every time 3D reality doesn't look like what I think it should look like, even though I have no idea what it's supposed to look like. Hello. Or B, I'm the version of self that had this experience. That's who I am. And I still got my full outcome.
That's who I am. I was proposed in, in Paris by SP or word it the way you want. But do you see what I'm saying? Surrender to the 3D. Don't try to choke hold it. You don't have to fight. You don't have to will circumstances into being. You get to just calmly decide. Decide. But you've got to make the decision. You've got to decide that it really is just that easy. And not let 3D reality tell you anything different. We're breaking free of the control of the 3D. We're not giving it back, right? Surrendering to your 3D simply means, it's like surrender, comma, detachment. It's the same idea. I don't care that I don't see the Paris, France tickets for the Paris proposal. I don't care. I'm the version of South that's getting proposed to in Paris. That's who I am. It's gonna happen. I don't care what reality tells me. This is who I'm claiming to be. We must act on the assumption that we already possess that which we desire. For all that we desire is already present within us. It only waits to be claimed. Claimed. That it must be claimed is a necessary condition by which we realize our desires, our prayers are answered if we assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and continue in that assumption. You are claiming to be the version of you that had whatever it is you're manifesting. You're claiming it for yourself. You're making a decision. So what's true for you? Are you still the version of self that shits themselves every time they see something in reality they don't love? Or do you know better? Are you claiming to be the version of you that friggin' knows better? But there is nothing in reality that can stop you from getting what you want. Nothing and no one. And no one has to go along with your decision. No one has to believe what you believe. No one has to agree with your manifestation, just you do, just you, just you. So who are you claiming to be? Are you wasting your time shitting yourself over 3D circumstances and conditions? And listen, what do I mean by that? I don't mean that you can't have your emotional moments. I have emotional moments. I look at crying as releasing releasing old shitty beliefs, releasing unfavorable versions of myself. It is okay to have emotions and feelings. But we don't have to stay there. It's not okay to be there every friggin' day, 24, 7. It's not. We're making our decision with that. Let's make a new decision. Surrender that 3D and claim who you want to be, claim it for yourself. And don't worry about what's happening out here. Reality will change with your decision to be any version of yourself. And remember what I've said before. Sometimes reality doesn't look any different when you make your decision, but that doesn't mean reality around it hasn't changed. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for the trick that the same circumstance is in your face, so therefore it didn't work. Yes, it did. Return to your decision. Ask, believe, receive, bitch. Okay? So on that note, I'll see you tomorrow.